more educational resources like our HMP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the best resources for the ob shelf as well as the rotation. And we're going to be talking about some of the best question banks, textbooks, videos, as well as websites or physical resources. So just starting off, probably the most important part to any shelf is going to be the question bank. And very similarly, UWorld is going to be the one that's always going to be on top. The only downside with UWorld for ob is that there's not that many questions. There's only about 250 questions, which in my opinion is probably not enough uh, for the shelf exam, for most people at least. So I think that the next best one to supplement it with is going to be this one by the Association of Gynecology and Obstetrics. Um, and they make a question bank that has about 500 questions and I, I would I can't say that it's better than U World, but I would say that it comes very close. It's probably the next best thing that you can get to U World. And it gives you a fair number of questions and fairly similar to the actual shelf um, as well as step two. And then finally it, there's gonna be MBMEs. It's the only downside that I can say is that the APGO questions as well as the MBMEs are gonna cost you some extra money. So you may have to decide between the two which one you're gonna take. The good part about UIs is that they give you explanations to all these questions. MBMEs don't do that, but also the good part of MBMEs is that they're, they're going to be actual exams or past exams. Next thing is going to be a textbook. So what are some of the resources that you can utilize for textbooks? It kind of all depends on, on what, you, what you desire. So I think probably the two best ones are going to be case files as well as blueprints. And they're very, very different. Case files gives you a bunch of cases as well as questions at the end. Um, and it's very practical learning. So I think there's somewhere around 50 to, to 60 cases. And they'll walk you through the case as well as give you some information about the disease and things like that so that you'll learn a lot along the way but it's in a very interactive way whereas blueprints it's much more reads like a normal textbook would it's a little bit more dense I would say than than case files but it also probably gives you a lot more depth than you would get in case files so it kind of all depends on what you desire and specifically what you desire when you're studying for this exam and also just preparing for the rotation itself case files for me was really good before either going into some type of procedure or also just reading about the patients that I had or the patients that I had on the team, whereas Blueprints was really good for the shelf because it gave you a lot more detail and a lot more frameworks that you could go off of. Other books that people utilize are going to be Master the Board series, First Aid for Step 2. In my opinion, these are a little bit less high yield than the other two that I mentioned just because they're very broad um, and they don't go in very much detail. It's definitely something that you want to utilize once you're studying for step two. But when you're studying for the shelf, you want to, at least in my opinion, you want to try to delve as deep into it as possible for each of the subjects, whether it be surgery, ob internal medicine, you want to learn as much as possible. And then once you start studying for step two, it's much more a broad overview because you don't have as much time to read an entire textbook for each of these subjects. So for the shelf, I think that these two books are going to be best. You can kind of just pick which one you think is going to work out for you based off of your learning. Next is going to be these video lectures. I think probably there's going to be two video lectures series that you can utilize. One being the video lectures offered by Online MedEd. I talk about this in a lot of the other series of rotation series. It's really just a great resource because it gives you information very quickly and very simply and really tries to make things as easy and digestible as possible. It's about 10 hours of video lectures from Online MedEd for ob as well as or for upstairs obstetrics as well as gynecology. The other one that probably is a little bit less heard of, which but I think is extremely useful, is we go back to the APCO, which was the Association for Gynecology and Obstetrics, where we were talking about their UIs, their uh, question bank. Well, now they also have made a YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel walks you through some of the most common diseases as well as some of the approaches that you can take. And I think that it's really great because these are almost like podcasts. So you can essentially just download all of these podcasts and listen to them whenever you want. The YouTube video itself isn't all that helpful, but it's something that the information that I'm talking about is extremely useful. And so what I mean is that the actual things that they're displaying on the screen aren't really 
that relevant. They kind of just spell out almost like captions of what they're saying. So great because you can take it on the go. You, if you have a commute, you can listen to them. And I think it's really a great resource because uh, the teachers are very good and they're all ob physicians, whereas online med ed isn't necessarily made by an ob physician. Next one, Sketchy Medical, Picmonic. Not going to talk about it too much, but really just utilize it for pharmacology and only utilize it if you've used it in the past for your step one study. Next one's going to be some resources on the wards. Just like everything else, pocket medicine is great for just approaches and just general knowledge. Um, I think it's always good regardless of the rotation you're on, even for surgery, definitely for internal medicine and also ob guy. It's going to be extremely useful. The other one, this is one that we have made, is going to be the medical notes. And uh, what we kind of did was we broke down some of the highest yield information and broke it down by subject. Um, and there's an ob guy section, there's surgery, internal medicine, and so on and so forth. And so ob guy and definitely good to, to remember some important details that we kind of listed here in medical notes as well as for pediatrics when you're dealing with the babies. And then finally, what are going to be some websites that you can utilize on the wards? And I've talked about this in other videos as well, but very simply up to date, probably everybody utilizes it, but definitely want to use it specifically more so than something like Wikipedia um, to get your information. But also, I think it's very important that when you're recommending, especially when you're giving a presentation in regards to recommending some type of medication, you want to make sure that you're giving dosing as well as frequency. So the dosing and frequency is is going to be, in my opinion, probably better on something like Micromedics rather than up to date. I think does have it, uh, definitely does have dosing and frequency. It's a little bit harder to find than something like Micromedics, but use whatever works for you, but just use something. You can't just give a plan that just has a medication without the dosing or the frequency, especially if you're further into your third year and especially if you're in your fourth year of medical school. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.